A lot of big stars got their start in horror. Brad Pitt is no exception. I don't think it was his first movie, but he was in a slasher movie called Cutting Class. I've never seen it until recently on Tubi, and we're going to review it. So anyway, let's go Cutting Class. Cutting Class stars Brad Pitt, Jill Sholin, and is directed by Rospo Pallenberg. What's up, guys? Welcome to a catalog review. This is a patron request for David B. Uh, he's been giving me a lot of really good slashers. You'll remember we did Sweet 16 not too long ago. You uh, are definitely um, on my good side when you're asking me to review 80 slashers. And uh, this was, I'm going to say it, I'll just go ahead and put this out front. It's not a good slasher um, at all. Was it a teenager in distress or a murderer in disguise? I think there's some fun stuff in it and it's irresistible to see Brad Pitt in this movie. Um, you know, when you see a really, really big star, you know, kind of like Matthew McConaughey and Renee Zellweger in Texas. And, the, and this is a movie that most of the time, you know, the, the, the big stars, they don't want to have anything to do with this. I've even heard that Brad Pitt tried to like get this movie erased from existence. I don't know how true that is, but I would believe it. And maybe even if this was like a really good movie, they still don't want it to exist. But then there's other cases where the actor, they look back on the, the memory fondly. Like I think recently Paul Rudd was on Howard Stern and he was talking about Halloween 6. And I had no money on me. Oh. And he's thought like, and he got. You should that. have said to him, "I was in Halloween." I'm like, I don't have money. Look, it <laughs> has a good six, dude. <laughs> Get the guy who was in Halloween one. <laughs> right. But but seriously, about Jamie Lee Curtis here. And he, you know, he said he used to kind of be ashamed of it but the more he thinks back on it now hey i got to be in a freaking halloween movie at the start of my career how awesome is that so you know um brad pitt tried out for jesse in nightmare on Elm street part two so he had been working in hollywood throughout the 80s and he's even like an extra in less than zero which uh was you know pretty eye-opening a lot of stars they get their start as playing extras they do what they can to get money to put food on the table to make ends meet to pay for that one bedroom apartment and eventually end up in a big mansion and be one of the highest paid actors in hollywood you know it's a true cinderella story so you can't help but be proud of brad pitt for you know starting so low you got to start somewhere right so let's start you off with a quick plot synopsis for cutting class um, it's a high school slasher movie. You got Jill Sholin playing the main character. Um, her name is Paula in the movie. It's always nice to see Jill Sholin too. I recently discovered her. I, I just happened to review like Popcorn and um, When a Stranger Calls Back and she's in both those movies. And I immediately was drawn to her. I think she was um, a real a real bright spot for horror at a certain time, you know, in the, uh, the late 80s, early 90s. And I'm kind of going stream of consciousness on this review, but you know, it, it definitely uh, harkens back to the late 80s being a, a, a strange time for slasher movies. Uh, slasher, the genre, had kind of played itself out and uh, they were just kind of uh, petering. And most of those movies from the late 80s that, don't, that aren't franchise movies, they often go forgotten unless a Brad Pitt stars in them or something like that. But for every movie like this, there's a ton of them that had no-name actors that... Uh, you know, nobody knows about because there were so many freaking slasher movies back then. Her boyfriend is Dwight, played by Brad Pitt, and then there's this um, question mark of a character by the name of Brian Woods, uh, played by Donovan Leach Jr. And I think this character was properly casted too. Uh, Donovan Leach just has a unique look about him. Uh, you could definitely see like, a, you know, he could portray like an evil type character, but he's still a good looking guy. And this character has a dark past. He was in like this uh, mental ward and you know he was given electroshock treatment on a daily basis you know reason for admittance violent schizophrenic electroconvulsive therapy what's electroconvulsive therapy shock treatment man you automatically assume that oh this must be the killer because there's a killer going around uh you know dropping victims one by one of the high school now i'm going to talk some spoilers in this movie just to bring up a point uh, and I'm not even going to say the phrase that I'm going to bring up until we get to that part. But I definitely want to talk about that. It'll be a little later in the review. And uh, I'll tell you why once we get there. So I'm going to tell you who the killer is later in the review. But don't leave just yet. Now, like I said, I think in terms of being a good slasher, the reason I say this isn't a really good slasher is just because 
it does try to check the boxes of a, a slasher movie. It does have, uh, you know, um, I think a one or two nudity scenes in it. Uh, just to kind of get them out of the way. There are a couple of questionable scenes, like uh, poor Jill Sholin. She literally has to bend over, I think, at least like three times in this movie. The great Roddy McDowell is the principal, and he's you know playing a pervert, and Jill Sholin is in his office, and he has her bend over, and he's just like, you know, taking a peek. And, but there's a couple of scenes like that, and uh, like when she's in the art class, and then the art teacher makes her bend over, and my, my whole time, I'm thinking, you know, sure, I love, you know, TNA and 80 slashers and all that. But then sometimes it just feels like uh, I don't want the actor to feel extremely uncomfortable in the role. Yeah, nudity is a part of these movies. But when you're making them bend over, you know, for a prolonged amount of time, and if, you know, you, you can pretty much multiply however long they are in the movie by 10 at least. Because I've been on movie sets before and there's a lot of waiting around and there's a lot of coverage filmed you know sometimes five six takes sometimes 50 takes who knows so i, I couldn't help but feel for jill Sholin during these scenes like you know i go to a uh, acting school and i have this is what i'm subjected to i have to like just bend over for this director constantly uh it's just uh, i don't know it, it just kind of turned me off a little bit you don't have the great kills to back it up either like this movie, it definitely has some blood in it, but I can tell you right now, I, I saw this movie last week, if there were great kills, I would remember them. I don't remember a single kill in this movie, and I think that should say something. All I remember is that they were just very safe kills, there were cutaway kills. Um, it just feels like there was no like great setup for these kills you know they just needed to get them over with and move on to the next scene brad pitt is our final guy in this movie he plays dwight i do like how they deal with this character's i wouldn't call it an arc i think he's the same character throughout the whole movie but it's a case of let's let's make sure the audience knows that this guy's kind of a dick and a douchebag but let's somehow root for him by the end of the movie because he's kind of the only saving grace for the, the final girl jill, jill solon it would be like if Trent from Friday the 13th Part 9, and I'm not saying he's that bad, but you know he's introduced at the beginning of the movie, and then by the end of the movie, he's the only saving grace for you know protecting the final girl. Like, it's like by default, right? It's not that I hated Brad Pitt's character, and as far as acting goes, it's nothing to write home about. But I don't think he's given the material to really flex in this movie. You know, it's just a, a high school kid, and you know he's not bad in the movie at all. But you can tell Brad Pitt's come a long way with his craft and you know not too many years later he's doing true romance and stealing that you know that scene in that movie jill Sholin is always a bright spot in any movie that she did back then she's just the ultimate rootable final girl you can't help but like her um you know she just has this vibe about her and you, you can't help but like her in this movie as well and guys don't get me wrong i love high school slasher movies they are a freaking blast when they're done right and uh, you know if the kills deliver or if there's just a really uh twisted plot element in there you know like say like butcher baker nightmare maker stuff like that give us something to get under our skin and this movie doesn't really do any of that so now i'm going to talk about uh the the killer and i'm going to reveal who the killer is so if you don't want to know then um you know don't stick around okay but the reason i wanted to, to do this five four three two one is because brian woods is the killer in the movie and uh this is what i refer to as the obvious slasher did i create that term i'm not sure i don't think i got that term from anywhere i'm not trying to brag but i think i might have created the term obvious slasher maybe i can spread it okay and if you don't know what the obvious slasher is it's when you, you know, the first guy in the first 10 minutes or however, when this character enters, you're like, oh, they want you to think that's the killer. You know, the movie wants you to think, you know, in every slasher movie, the movie wants you to think a certain character is the killer. You know, that's the, is it the red herring? And, and many movies have, you know, like Scream. Oh my God, they have like freaking 15 red herrings before you finally get to who the actual killer is. Although the first screen might be considered an obvious slasher because who they're pointing the finger at constantly through the movie is who ends up being the killer. So, same thing here. It's set up like a whodunit, but it ends up being Brian Woods, who is the killer. This is a tactic in horror movies that is not presented that often. More times than not, the killer is going to be who the movie is trying to steer you away from the most. 
oftentimes it's the guy that no way that guy could be the killer and then he's the killer okay but yeah obvious slasher that they're making you think that guy's the killer and brian woods of course is the killer in the movie and i like that i like when movies kind of turn things on their head like that other cases have been uh terror train valentine and i'm sure there's a few other cases if you know let me know, know down in the comments okay but um yeah i like I, I wish there were 10 of them so i could do a ranking but right now i can only think of like three or four of them uh and that just goes to show how many slasher movies because there's been a, probably a thousand slasher movies by now i can only think of three obvious slasher movies okay so it's a fun discussion though but overall guys i'm gonna give this movie you know just because it's a slasher and i have a soft spot for slashers i'm gonna give it a super low humdrum a lot of you if you don't like slasher movies then you're gonna give this you know a lower rating but i'll give it a low humdrum out of respect and it's cool to see brad pitt in a you know a slasher movie from the 80s right that is a pretty cool thing so have you seen cutting class it is on tubi let me know down in the comments looking forward to hearing your thoughts also be sure to come over to killer flicks where we talk horror all day and every day and on fridays we do free for fridays follow me drum dumbs on my social support me on patreon become a channel member buy me a coffee anyway guys thank you so much for watching have a good day drum dumb out